Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. In the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at several ways that we can use flags, stars, and color labels to tag our photos, and then use a filter to view only those tagged photos. Starting in grid view, along the toolbar, we can see the color labels. I also want to display the flag icon, so I'll use the drop-down menu and choose flagging, and I'll return and also show rating. Now I typically use flags when I'm just looking for the single best image from a shoot, or when I'm flagging an image to reject it. I typically use stars when I have a hierarchy that needs more than just a single on-off or flag or not flag status. And then color labels I use for anything else, maybe a reminder to convert to black and white or photos that need to still be retouched. So let's start with the flags. I'm going to select this image here in grid view, and we can use the thumbnail slider in order to see larger thumbnails if we want to, or we could double click in order to go to loop view. But if you want to flag right here in grid view, we can just click on the flag icon. We then see the flag here in the upper left of our expanded cells. Now with this next series of images, I'm going to select them all, and then tap E in order to go into loop view. And we can either use the arrow icons in the toolbar to move from one image to the next, or we can use our arrow keys on the keyboard. Since I like this image the best, I can either click on the flag icon, or I can tap the P key, which will label it as a pick. I'll tap G to return to grid view, scroll down, and let's select these two images. Again, I'll tap E to go to loop view, and I like this image, so I'll tap P to flag it as a pick, move to the next image, and unfortunately this one's out of focus, so I can either click on the reject flag, or I can tap the X key. I'll tap G to return to grid. If I ever want to change the rating or unflag an image, I can either click on the icon again in the toolbar, or I can tap the U key to unflag. Now we haven't talked about filtering, but if we wanted to see only our flagged or unflagged images, I could click on Attribute and then choose the first icon to see our flagged images, click it again to turn off the filter, and click on the last icon in order to see the rejected photos. We can also choose None to turn off the filtering. Next, let's talk about star ratings. So stars are great when you need a hierarchy. I'm going to scroll down maybe to this image here. Now I typically only use one, two, or three stars. For me, usually the hierarchy of having zero through three stars is enough. We can rate in any view, so we can start here in grid, and then in the expanded cells, I can click on any of these dots in order to add that many stars. If I wanna change it, I'll just click on a different star or dot to increase or decrease it. We can also use the keyboard shortcuts, zero to give us zero stars, and then one, two, three, four, or five. All right, in this case, I'll tap two in order to give me two stars. If we want to go to loop view to see our images larger, we can. Then I'll use the arrow keys to move from one image to the next. When I see an image I like, I'll tap the one key, that'll give it one star, and then move through the images. Here, I'll give this two stars, and if after we star an image, we want Lightroom to automatically move to the next image, we can invoke cap locks on the keyboard. Now I use my right arrow in order to move from one image to the next, but when I tap two, I don't have to use that right arrow. Lightroom will automatically move to that next image. All right, I'll tap two here, and then one for this image, and just keep moving through and either marking with one or two, depending on the quality of the image. Now, if we get tired of selecting images and then rating images or moving through them in this manner, we can return to grid and then select the painter tool. From the drop down menu, I can choose rating and then enter in the number of stars that I want to apply. In this case, I'll choose two and then just click on the image thumbnail. Now this image was selected, but you'll notice if I scoot over to this image and click, it will automatically give me those two stars without having to first select the image. I'll keep scrolling down 
adding the two stars to whichever images I think deserve it. Now, if I only want to see my two star images, we can return to the attribute filter, take off the flag attribute, and then add the two stars. And we can change this from rating is greater than or equal to, or rating is less than or equal to, or rating is equal to. I'll leave it set to the first option. And now we can see all of our two star images. I'm going to put away the painting tool. And what's nice about viewing our images with two stars or greater is that if I decide now that I only want one of these two images to be two stars, I can quickly select it and demote it by clicking on the one star and it will take it out of my view because I'm filtering on the two stars or greater. All right, I'll choose none. And then if I ever wanted to add a color label, I could just scroll down and select the image and then either click on the color label in the toolbar or use the keyboard shortcuts six, seven, eight, and nine for red, yellow, green, and blue. We can see that as soon as I added that color label, Lightroom automatically selected the next image because I still have the caps lock key on. Excellent. As you can see, there are many different ways to tag your photos. Just choose the one that's right for your workflow and you'll be all set. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.